This might be the Muzar. Oh, it just smells awesome. Sour cherry, meat, pepper. Oh. I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. We're just gonna jump right into the content. I talked about Lebanese wine in a previous video where I tasted Lebanese wines under $25. Now, we're tasting the big boys. This is the premium. This is like the creme de la creme of Lebanon. All facts, figures, history, just go back to the other video, okay? When it comes to premium Lebanese red wine, Chateau Mazar is like the icon. Some think it's an anachronism. Some think it's a modern masterpiece. A lot of volatile acidity, and we have it here today. Although I've had some Chateau Mazar where the Volatola City didn't stand out so much. Lebanese wine is so much more than Muzar. There are some great producers here, and I'm looking forward to tasting these. Sometimes, in the more premium price range of Lebanese reds, they want to be a little bit too oaky, too ripe, but at the other end, they can be just masterpieces. So I'm looking forward to tasting these big wines. Let's give it a go here. Again, tasting out of my Gabriel Glass Standard Editions, a lot of these are either Bordeaux or Rhone blends, so this glass is perfect for them. I've got a link in the description box. Just check it out. It's a great glass, okay? Trust me. Okay, let's get it. Wine number one, wine one. This might be the Muzar. Oh, it just smells awesome. Sour cherry, meat, pepper, rubber, but just has like this mineral, this kind of serious note, you know, that we're stepping up. You can tell, I can tell already from the first wine. I just did the under $25 wines. We're getting to some serious stuff here. This, I would think almost to be Italian. I, have, I might call Italian if it was blind. Just so much sour cherry. This baby is smooth rich, refined, complex, not too big. Whatever one is, that's a hell of a wine. That's a good start here. <laughs> that's a big wine to start. That really reminds me of a balance maybe between a Tuscan wine and then something uh, something really refined out of the south of France, the Rhone. That's a good start. Let's go with wine two. Wine two is a little bit brighter, more cherry type flavors. This is pure fruit. Number one had a little more refinement. Two is just fruit, fruit, fruit with a little bit of pepper. It smells more medium body, a little lighter in color. Two's got a lot of bright acidity. The wines in Lebanon are grown at the Becca Valley, 1,000 meters above sea level, about 3,000 feet. So they have cool nights, they retain acidity nice. This is really juicy, lower in tan, not as complex as wine one, but wine two is delicious. It's a little simpler, so to speak, but I don't say that in a negative way. It's still a very, very good wine. Wine three, uh, a, a lot of these, this is great. None of these wines are overripe. Black cherry, meat, earth. Nothing is meat matching the complexity for me like wine one, but this smells really nice. Some chocolate notes come out, but subtly, I like that none of these wines are over oaked. Like none of, not, none of these first three are. Just cherry, garrigue, a little bit of red plum maybe. Ooh, the spite and the mouth feels on these wines are so good. That's what you get. When you're tasting cheap versus expensive wine right next to each other, like I just did the sub $25 range, you see a step up in quality and that the finish on that is excellent. To me, one and three so far just scream like what I think of Lebanese wine should be. Beautiful. Let's move on to wine number four here. Wine four is a little bit riper, has some kind of more kind of rubber type notes in a good way. Sometimes I associate rubber notes with uh, Rioja Reserva, Grand Reserva. A lot of winemakers, you know, rubber can be a fault, so get mad when I say that, but I, it's a note that I find quite attractive. It's a little bit riper, a lot of earth type notes. Real, I mean, this is for people that like big wines. Oh. Not, this is not my style wine, 904, because it's big and fruity, but it's not too oaky, and it's just really good. The finish is great. Uh, really, really good. With Lebanese reds, a lot of times, too, you're going to get wines have been held back. I don't know if it's they can't sell, or they like to hold back to, you know, have wines with a little more maturity. So... I think that's where you're winning too as well. You know, a lot of people are pushing wines to be sold fresh and fresh. You want turnover, you want to make money. Lebanese wines have some age on them, so that's what's kind of cool. Let's start out with wine five. Wine five is very distinctive. Black olive. This smells like the Rhone. Baked strawberry, lots of meat. Pepper, super complex. Ooh. Pencil shaving on the back end. Complex, some mouth co coating tannin. That's dis it's the most distinctive. Out it's not my favorite, but it's the most distinctive out of the wine so far. Wine six a little shy at first. Let, let's see, showing me something though. Musar is not standing out here. Musar, like I said, I've had some bottles. Sometimes the volatile city, that fingernail polish type 
type of aroma, which Muzar is known for having a lot of, it can turn a lot of people off, but I have had bottles where that's at a minimum, and I haven't picked a lot of it up here. You're always going to get some volatile acidity from warmer weather wines and wines that are aged in the barrel, because basically the wines are maturing, they're kind of moving along the path towards vinegar. Black cherry, fruity. Wine 6 is really unique, because on the palate, smells like just fruit, 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 but on the palate, it's... It's quite a stare. It's kind of holding back a little bit. It's restrained. Something I like. I think it's a wine that's going to show really nice with time. It's already really good. Those that like more fruity type wines going to go for wine three. Those with more nuances going to like something like this. It's good. It's really good. I think I know what Chateau Mazar is. I think. But that's the power of blind tasting. You ready for the reveal? Let's get it. Okay, first of all, sometimes in this price range, I find the Lebanese wines try to be too much of what they are, too oaky, too big, too powerful. I saw none of that here, which I am super happy. All these were fine wines, some exceptional. Uh, let's get started. All well above 90. We're going to start out with wine two. I have it at 91 points. It's the leanest out of the most, more bright. It, you know, usually with something that I'm going to like, I would like a little tad more complexity, but regardless, it's the lightest in color. It's more red fruit driven. I, I think it's a very good wine. That's why I have it at 91 points. Uh, lots of acidity. Wow, <laughs> the Domaine Torel. This is the Vivian Carignan uh, 2019. 25 bucks, old vine Carignan. And this is the oldest, I think, private winery in Lebanon. Just kind of has had a revival. I know their Cinso was named as like one of the top 100 wines you have to try before you die. Really nice at 25 bucks, 91 points. Good stuff. We have two tied at 92 points, wines four and six, both for different reasons. Wine four, more fruity, a lot more of a crowd pleaser. Wine six smelled fruity, but a little bit more austere on the palate wasn't giving me as much fruit. So let's go with the fruity one first. I think this is what a lot of people are gonna like. 92 points, tons of fruit. It's big, but the cool thing about fruity wines, sometimes they can be too oaky. This was not, which I was super excited about. Let's take... <laughs> Ninety-two points. This is a 2015 Chateau Moussard. Uh, Sixty bucks. Cabernet Sauvignon, Carignan, Cinso. Did not pick up any volatile acidity. I thought wine one was Chateau Moussard. Wow. Ninety-two points. Still, like I said, it's gonna be a crowd pleaser. That's the power of wine tasting, man. That is <laughs> shocking. Okay. So the most famous wine, Chateau Moussard, didn't win. So wine six, anyways. Jeez. <laughs> this wine, Chateau Moussard. It showed so differently in different types of tastings. A lot of bottle variation, a lot of vintage variation. Blows my mind, oh well. Okay, wine six, fruity up front, but yeah, a stare on the finish also gave it 92 points. I'm having a hard time getting over the Mazar. Okay, focus, Matt, focus. 92 points, also let's take a look here. We have the L -E -X -R, uh 2016. This is their premium wine, red, 59 bucks. 55% Syrah, 35 uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Merlot. Very good wine. 2016 tastes a little, tastes a lot younger than it actually is. Really good stuff. I want to see what wine won here. <laughs> okay. Wine three here, 92 plus points. Just the finish was really, really good. That's what stretched it out. A lot of cherry, a lot of red fruit, but the finish, the length really, really got me. Wine that I thought was very good. Obviously gave it 92 plus points. This is the Messiah Cap S 2017 from Lebanon, 40 bucks. This is a GSM. No, it's just a GM, basically. Grenache Noir, 50%, more Vedra, 50%. Finish on this is brilliant. 40 bucks. Uh, also, I like I like the Lebanese wines that use some more of the Rhone wines. I know some of the older vines there are Carignan, Senso, Grenache, Morved, so that's cool. Okay, the top two. And before we reveal the top two, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, click on the bell so you know when new videos are come out, and leave a comment for the YouTube gods. Have you tried any of these wines? What do you think about Lebanese wines? Okay, wine five, 93 points, the most Rhone. Black olive, uh, a lot of meatiness, dark, rich, finish was great, and it's the most distinctive wine. 93 points. Uh, I thought it was very, very, very good. Let's see what it is. So, this it, wow, the Chateau Canafar 2014. I think they're fairly close to Moussard. 60% Syrah, 30% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, distinctive Lebanese red. Merdana number one. <laughs> 
The, I thought this was the mix between everything I like about Central Italian wines with the sour cherry notes, something with the Southern Rhone, you mix it in. I thought it was very good. I gave it 94 points. I thought it was an outstanding wine. Let's take a look. Let's see what it is here. The Chateau Heritage, uh, the Chateau 2017. This is 60% Syrah, 40% Cabernet Sauvignon. The cheapest wine, 30 bucks. 30 bucks, <laughs> wow. Shocking, that's the power of blind tasting. Tell me, what do you think about Lebanese red wines? Are you gonna try some of these? I think you should, super good value for money. And the under 25, as we saw in the previous video, and the over 25. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you with the next video.